Um, I'm very appreciative to be here. Um, I am the president of an organization called End Distracted Driving. And if you go on the, online, it's ndd.org. I became president of the organization uh, after my daughter Casey was killed by a distracted driver. And that's why I do this presentation. And that's why I've worked with SAD and I'm working with uh, Katie and Danielle because we want all you kids to be safe. We want all of you kids to be safe. Now, the inspiration for this program came from a woman, a mom and a nurse in Massachusetts named Emily Stein. Emily's the president of an organization called Safe Roads Alliance, and we work with them as well. And they do a lot of work all across the country, but particularly in New England, and they work with students, elementary school students and others to, with programs to keep them safe. Emily also lost her dad to a distracted driver, and that's why she's passionate about distracted driving. So Emily and I have worked for the past year with educational experts and a lot of other experts and Katie and Danielle, who are teachers. Uh, Katie is a fourth grade teacher in Springfield, Illinois. And Danielle, Danielle is a first grade teacher here in, in my town, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're so grateful for all of their help. So now I'm going to turn this over to Katie, uh, who's going to start our lesson plan. Katie? Thanks so much, Joel. Welcome everyone. Today, we are learning all about distractions and how we can speak up when it comes to distracted driving. Let's take a look at the big ideas that we're going to learn about today on the next slide. So today we're going to learn about these things. What does it mean to be distracted? How being distracted affects us and others around us? What is distracted driving? And finally, what can we do about distracted driving when we are passengers? So now let's hear from our friend, Sam the Meerkat. Sam's going to tell us all about what is a distraction. Let's watch now. Hi there, I'm Sam. I'm a meerkat. Meerkats live in deserts and other dry places without many plants, like this. It doesn't look like there's much going on here, but meerkats need to pay attention. We're small and we're tasty. I have some special skills that help me see and hear and smell everything that's going on around me. And meerkats work together to keep each other safe. We call out whenever we see something that could be a problem. Imagine this. You're riding your bike when suddenly, what's that? A bee? Look out! Whoa. I've got this one. Mmm, bee. But if you're not a meerkat, that bee might make you panic and even do something dangerous, like swerve into the road. The bee is a distraction. Look out for distractions. A distraction is anything that takes your attention away from what you're doing. Sometimes a distraction comes from outside, like the bee. What's that? It's your sister playing drums while you're trying to watch a movie. That's an annoying distraction. A distraction might be something tempting, like <laughs> the smell of sizzling bees. I, I mean, bacon, interrupting your homework. A loud lawnmower, a siren going by, the phone ringing, the movie you're gonna see later with friends. All of these can be distractions. Some distractions come from your own thoughts or feelings. You know you should be studying, but what's this? A video game. What happened here? He didn't notice the ball because he was thinking about vacation. Some of us think we're good at multitasking, but doing two things at the same time usually isn't a good idea. Because when you do two things at once, each one is a distraction to the other. Whoops! 
I make sandwich first, then feed the fish. When you're distracted, you might not finish your work. You might make mistakes. Hey, Dad, I'm worried that if you don't pay attention, you're going to make a mess. Oh, thank you, sweetie. If you're doing something important or risky, distractions can be dangerous. Whoa. Almost anything can be a distraction. The important thing is to recognize when you're distracted. Then you can decide what to do about it. Sometimes you might decide to stop trying to do two things at once and just pay attention to the main thing that you're doing. Sometimes you can walk away from the thing that's distracting you. And sometimes you might decide to make the distraction go away. You might need to turn off the TV or turn off your phone. You might need to speak up and ask someone to change what they're doing. Or you might... Mmm... B. So when we look at this next slide, we see a reminder from Sam about what is a distraction. A distraction is anything that takes your attention away from what you're doing. Now would be a good time to pause this video and take a moment to brainstorm a list of distractions on a piece of paper. Distractions that you notice both at home and at school. So go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to brainstorm a list. Are you ready? Here are some ideas that we came up with when we were thinking about distractions. Let's take a look at those on the next slide. So remember, Sam talked about some of these distractions. Distractions at home can be someone mowing their yard outside, emergency vehicles, sirens, a phone ringing, maybe even a sibling making noise. But distractions can also be something inside, like thinking about what you're going to do over the weekend, or worrying about a test that's coming up. All of those things distract us. At school, distractions can include the bell ringing, classmates talking, noise in the hallway, or maybe even something outside the window. Again, all of those things take away from what we should be thinking about. Now, this time would be another good time to pause the video and think about distractions when it comes to driving. So take a moment to brainstorm a list again, but this time think about things that are distractions when you're in the car. Here are some ideas that we came up with when it comes to distractions in the car. So a driver might become distracted when they are texting, holding or using a smartphone. Maybe when they're eating, that's a distraction or putting on makeup. Distractions can also come from the passenger. So people fighting in the back seat can be a distraction as well. Did any of yours match our ideas on your list? Well, on the next slide, we can think about how we feel when our driver is driving distracted. So we might feel worried. We could feel scared. We could feel annoyed. We could even feel disrespected. Now I have a question for you on the next slide. Have you ever told your driver how you feel about their distracted driving? If you have, what happened? Think about that for a moment. Now let's go to the next slide and think about all that we've learned from Sam about distractions and how we feel when we're in the car with a distracted driver. Sam is going to teach us a strategy that we can use when we need to talk to our distracted driver. We can remember his name to do that, Sam. S, see a problem. A, address the problem using an I statement. And finally, M, make an action plan together. 
Now, Danielle is going to teach us all about how to use this strategy and come up with all sorts of ideas to use the SAM strategy in different situations. Let's hear from her now. On the next slide, you see just another slide introducing Sam, not Sam the meerkat, because you already met him, but now this is introducing the idea of using Sam's name to remind you how to solve a problem. So you see again, the S is for see a problem, A is for address the problem with an I statement, and M is for make an action plan together. On the next slide, you're gonna see a video where Sam teaches you about Everyone gets distracted now and then. It's just how our brains work. Sometimes, distractions are just annoying. Sometimes, being distracted can be a problem. Sometimes, being distracted can be a big problem. And, when other people are distracted, that can be a big problem for you, too. Mom! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Being distracted can even be dangerous. The good thing is, we can be aware of when we're distracted. And we can help other people be aware when they're not paying attention, too. Dad, you're not paying attention! Uh-oh. Yelling is probably not going to work. Why don't we try that again? Hey, Dad, I'm worried that if you don't pay attention, you're going to ruin my dinner. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I should be paying closer attention. That's an I statement. When you use the word I, you say how you feel. It tells the person what's happening that makes you feel that way. It can be hard to speak up sometimes, especially when someone is doing something that makes you feel uncomfortable, whether you're worried or scared or angry or sad or confused. And it can be hard to remember the best words to use. So here's something to help you remember what to do. You can use Sam. That's S-A-M, like me. S stands for see a problem. The problem here is that Dad is looking at his phone instead of paying attention to what's on the stove. A is for address the problem using an I statement. This is where you say something about the distraction. Hey, Dad, I'm worried that if you don't pay attention, you're going to ruin my dinner. Finally, M for make an action plan together. Notice I said together. You and the other person can work out a solution. Otherwise, you're just ordering people around. Here, Dad, let me do something. How can I help? Why don't you test the pasta? Perfect. Sam can come in handy in lots of situations. Maybe you're upset because your friends are arguing. Maybe you're scared because your mom is driving with her eyes on her phone instead of the road. Maybe you're angry because someone said something about you that isn't true. It might be time to speak up. Remember, see a problem. Address the problem with an I statement. Make an action plan together. The next time you want to speak up, remember Sam. That's ahem, me. you've seen Sam explain an I statement, you might start to wonder to yourself, have I ever seen a problem in the car when someone else has been driving? Um, and on the next slide, there are some examples of seeing a problem. So I want you to start to think about, have you ever felt uncomfortable or unsure about your safety when being driven somewhere? This might be the first time that you're ever thinking about this, or it might be something that you think about a lot. Um, either way, it is important to think about how to address what to do if you feel this way. 
Some examples of seeing a problem might include a mom who is driving and turns to check on a baby in the back seat and the car might move over the center line. Another example could be that an older brother or sister who is driving is fiddling or playing with something on their phone. Um, I'm sure that you can probably think of some other examples. Some that I thought of are the radio might be so loud that you feel like you can't even think or the driver might be talking to somebody next to them or a passenger and look away from the road. So what we want to start to think about is how to address these problems respectfully and appropriately. And we're going to talk about that a little more on the next slide using I statements. So you've already seen Sam do this when he addresses a problem with an I statement. An I statement lets the speaker say how she feels or he feels without blaming or putting the other person on the defensive. Using an I statement shows respect for other people, even when you don't like what they are doing. A you statement can sometimes hurt people. If you say something like, you are not paying attention or you are scaring me. When you make a statement like that, someone might feel angry or hurt, and they might not be as inclined to listen to you. I statements are non-confrontational. That means that they are not aggressive, they are not argumentative, they are meant to tell someone how you feel and help explain yourself and your feelings. On the next slide, we're gonna talk a little more about the I versus you statements. And um, we're actually going to see Sam do a little example of that for us first, I think, here. So on the I versus you statements, a statement doesn't mean that you are telling someone what to do. It means that you are letting them know that what they're doing makes you feel a certain way. Think about two different ways that Sam makes these statements and think about which one sounds better to you. So in one part here, Sam says, I feel scared when you look at your phone, or your driving scares me. Think about those two statements and think which one sounds better to you, right? Um, in our next example, it says, I'm nervous when you don't look at the road, instead of you need to look at the road. If you would like, you can pause this video for a moment and think about which one of these statements sounds better and why you think so. Okay, so I'm sure you've probably thought a little bit about which one sounds better, and it's probably the I statement. It sounds better because it's not making anyone feel defensive or attacked. It is helping people to understand each other and how each other feel. So we can go to the next slide and try practicing some I statements. This is a great place and time for you to practice making these statements. You can look at each of the following scenarios and think about what you would do. It will help if you write down your answers and talk to an adult about your thoughts. The first scenario says a friend borrows something and when it is returned, it is broken. Use an I statement to tell how you feel about this. The second one says your friend is going to try a dangerous trick on her skateboard and you don't know if she can handle it. Use an I statement to explain your concerns to her. The last one says, your classmates are playing a game at recess and you are left out. Use an I statement to tell your classmates how you feel about being left out. You can take a moment now to pause this video. Give yourself all the time you need to think about this and talk to a grown up about this. Now that you've had some time to think, maybe you came up with something like this. To the friend who broke your things, you might say, I am really disappointed. I thought you would take care of my things and they would come back in a better condition. To the friend who was attempting the dangerous trick, you might say, I feel very worried when you do an unsafe trick. I really feel like I do not want to see my friend get hurt. When you are feeling left out, it's important to say something like, I feel sad and lonely when I'm not included in the game. I wish I was invited to play. Practicing using I statements is a great way to make sure that you remember them when they are needed in the future. We can go to the next slide. 
um, kids can help others, including their parents, to solve these problems. You don't have to wait for someone to solve your problems for you. You have all of the skills and the brains that you need to solve these problems on your own. Let's talk about and brainstorm some ways to make an action plan to do just that. On the, yep, make an action plan and work together to solve the problem of distracted driving. Some examples are maybe saying, let's pull over to get my water bottle from under the seat. We're not in a hurry. Or can I answer that phone call for you? Or I'll text grandma and let her know we're almost there. Maybe you could make family rules for the car before ever even stepping into the car. Maybe you have a place in the car where you all put your phones for the drive. Or you have a no eating in the car rule so the driver doesn't feel left out. You could choose music before you start driving. You can come up with these things together so that no one feels that the rules are unfair. Try it now. Pause this video and write down some ideas for an action plan that you can share with your family. Now that you have some ideas, you might feel ready to share them with others. On to the next slide. Now we are going to see some real children try out the same way of solving a problem in a distracted situation. So how are your teachers? Oh, I love Mr. Burke and Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith is the nicest person. Uh-oh. Uh What's this? Mom's phone is a distraction, and distractions make it dangerous. My teachers right now, they're pretty amazing. We're not getting much homework. Mom! <laughs> Mom, you're not driving safely. How about we try that again? Mom, it scares me when you're driving and looking at your phone at the same time. What comes next? Maybe I should send that text for you, Mom. Or I can. Can I please? Or can I add an emoji at least? <laughs> Sorry, guys, you're right. I should really be watching the road. I'll text him that you call him when we get to the store. Can we get chips? That's how you stay safe with Sam. So as you saw in that video, the boy and girl in the car really used their Sam steps. They saw a problem that made them uncomfortable. And you got to see an example of how an I statement worked a little better than a you statement when they were speaking to their mom. That first you statement made the mom kind of feel angry or a little defensive. And then when they tried telling her how they felt, mom was very responsive and positive. And they even made an action plan and worked to use the phone themselves so that mom didn't have to use it. So on the next slide, we can talk about some other ways that we can support the end of distracted driving and things that we can do again before we even get into our cars to help to prevent these problems. Some of the things that we have thought of are making sure that all phones are on silent or turned off during a drive. Putting phones in do not disturb while driving mode is another great way to do this that you don't even have to think about. Passengers can make sure that they don't fight or get in loud arguments to be respectful of the driver. We would love if you would share any ideas you have with us. You can email ideas or thoughts to www.ndd.org and share some ideas that you've come up with. We would love to see them. Um, on the next slide, we're going to finish up by talking about how kids can keep themselves and those they care about safe from distracted driving. So this is the part that's up to you. You are kids right now, and these are some things that you can do. You can respectfully speak up using I statements like we've learned today. And in the future, you can choose to drive without distraction when you eventually get your license. Someday, it is going to be your responsibility 
to prevent and support those driving from being distracted and to also do those things for yourself. Building good habits now will make sure that when your turn comes to drive, you will be ready. And if anyone uses an I statement or tries to make an action plan for you, you will be able to accept it and understand it and make changes too. Stay safe out there. Here again is Joel Feldman to provide you with some more activities and ways that you can get involved. Uh, thank you, Danielle, and thank you, Katie. That was great. Thank you so much for, for giving the first elementary school lesson plan that, that's ever been given. And we really, we really, really appreciate it. So before we hang up, I, I just wanna show you these things. We have ex other activities. We have something for math, which is a multitasking mayhem, and it's really, really fun to do that. Uh, for some of the older students, now we have some higher level math and some fun things. Uh, there's English, you could write a, uh, a persuasive letter about distracted driving dangers, uh, art and technology, uh, making posters, slideshows, doing a visual presentation, and, and we walk you through some of those things, and those are up on our site. Uh, some other activities would be, some students have created a rap, a song, or a jingle about distracted driving, and then uh, what we call social-emotional learning. Um, we're calling these, often you'll hear these called accidents. But think about it. We want you to think about if a driver chooses to text while driving, should you call it an accident? So we have some exercises on that. You can actually look at newspaper articles and see whether or not the reporters use the words that you would have used now that you know about this. All right, then I'm, I'm just going to sum up now and thank everyone for, for watching, for being a part of this lesson plan. Each and every one of you now knows three very important things. You know about distractions. You know how to recognize when your driver is distracted. And you know about using I statements to let your driver know when they're doing something while driving that concerns you. Be safe. And thank you again so very, very much.